nominated. So I think we've always punched above our weight when it comes to uh, literary achievement, and I think that we're still there. And I, I think uh, Pat O'Connor, one of the men, has been uh, closely associated with the centre. So I'm delighted that we're playing our part in sort of helping people uh, achieve uh, this type of recognition. So um, finally, I just want to congratulate Patricia on a great book. Welcome her to the permanent writers from Limerick who have contributed to the literary and cultural life of the city. And I wish her continued success uh, in her writing good career. I hand you over to Jan to officially launch the book. Um, I think it is an indication of how much we value Patricia that there's such a huge turnout here tonight. Um, I'm going to begin by talking about Patricia because um, she's an extraordinary woman and there are people here from various elements of her life including her family, people from County Mayo, uh, people who worked with her in Shannon Development, people who helped her um, to get the Limerick School project up and running. Uh, and I'm going to declare an interest in another group that's here, and that is uh, two groups that are mentioned at the start of the book in the introduction, the Duck Walkers and the Golbathas. Um, now, I'm not a Golbatha, but I am a Duck Walker. Uh, and I'll just explain to those who don't know what, what the distinction is. Um, we, we, I got to know Patricia, well, originally, actually, I knew her from the, the uh, Limerick School Project idea originally, but I really got to know her as a walker. Uh, we've wandered, as she says in the introduction, many highways and byways together, up top of hills and round lakes, etc. Um, but most of us belong to a group called the Duck Walkers. We wander around Classy mainly, we used to meet at the Lame Duck. But I, I just want to tell you about the Gobathas first, because I'm not a member of that. I've been excluded from that particular group, because I don't have any sticks. Gobatha, as people will know, is the Irish for two sticks. And they're the people who've retired who go walking on a Friday. Um, and unfortunately, I don't fit in both categories because I'm not free on a Friday and I don't have any walking sticks. Huh? So um, that's, that's, I suppose, how I know Patricia as well as I know her. Um, but she is an extraordinary woman. She worked at a very high level in Shannon Development for many years. And uh, she retired. And uh, after she retired, she started writing. And she went and did an MA in writing in UCG. And uh, when we'd be walking with her, she, she started telling us about the poetry she was writing. And then she started writing short stories, and she had, she's just writes pretty much all the time, I think. And she produced this extraordinary and wonderful book. Um, and I, I'm probably one of the few people who had the opportunity to read it, because I got an advanced copy because I was speaking here tonight. And um, it is a wonderful book, and those of you who've bought it um, will thoroughly enjoy it, and I hope a lot more people will buy it. Um, it's, it's, there's a huge amount of research in it. It's uh, based on a, a true incident that happened in Ackle, uh, where a landlord, uh, Agnes MacDonald, was disfigured um, and, and her house was burnt. And the person who was accused of this was <coughs> James Lynchahan. And they're the two central characters of the story, and they're real people who existed. Um, and there, there's a, a very dramatic story around um, that incident and what happened before and after. But it's interwoven with Irish history. Um, the land wars in particular and the relationship between uh, land, the landlord class and the tenant class. And it was particularly traumatic in the, in the west of Ireland where Patricia comes from. from she's a male woman herself, though not from Ackham. But um, her grand uncle um, was a Franciscan, I think, um, who was, was part of that particular history and who wrote about James Lynch who was, uh, was uh, I think a friend of his um, so he's part of the history um, but the whole kind of relationship between landlords and tenants the, the terrible sadness uh, for people in Ackham who had to go and work and pick potatoes in Scotland and had to travel very far away from their families to work and there are incidents in, particularly tragic incidents there's, a, there's um, an incident where a, a large number of people were drowned um, on their way to Scotland from Ackham um, during the period of the book. Um, there is also the connection with, uh, with Singh in the Playboy of the Western World, and that's why the, the subtitle is Island Outrage and a Playboy Drama, because um, Singh went to Ackham around that period of time as well. Um, we're talking about the end of the 19th century, more or less, um, end of the 19th century. Uh, and he, James Inchahan is one of the inspirations for the character of Christy Mahon in the Playboy of the Western World. 
Um, and there are other kind of historical elements that are properly researched. I mean, they're, they're not made up. They're, they're actual history. They've come into the, into the book. And she's been absolutely true to the history uh, of the time. Um, but she's written it not as a historian, but as a writer. And that's what makes it you know, such, such a good read, because um, she tells the story. She's true to the history, but she tells the story. And I know that after I finished reading it, I was still thinking for a long time about, first of all, the character of Agnes MacDonald, who's the landlord, who is the person who's disfigured and whose house is burnt. But how she could have been so, I suppose, lacking in understanding of the kind of lives that her tenants were living. Um, she used to take them to court for straying onto her land, etc. Um, and then on the other hand, how somebody could actually do to her what this man did to her. Um, you know, in physically attacking her, not just burning her house, but physically attacking her and disfiguring her. So um, I, I think it gives you an insight without, you know, trying to um, imagine, if you like, what the reasons are, are, are the, the actual thinking in, in the minds of these people. It does make you actually try to understand Irish history and why people did the things that they did um, in the past. And I think, you know, it is the real writer in Patricia that, that gives you that kind of insight and makes you think um, about the human beings who were involved in our history on whatever side they were on in these, in these various conflicts uh, in our history. Um, so it is an extraordinary book. Um, it's very much interweave, interwoven in, in Patricia's own family history because of her granduncle's involvement in the story. Um, it, it tells you a lot about Irish life, I think, and the, you know where we all come from. Um, and yeah, as well as that, though, it, it really is a very good read and a very good story. And I just wanted, I know Patricia's going to read um, some herself, but I just wanted to read one little piece just to give you a sense of, um, there's a great sense of place in the book as well. There's a great sense of, of Akin, uh, and certainly that is making me want to go. I don't know about anybody else when they read it. Um, but just to read a little bit, just to give you a sense of that, you know, this is a creative writer um, who is writing uh, with integrity on the history of what she's writing about, but with a writer's ability to tell a story. Um, and this is just a description of, uh, of um, the sea, actually, uh, uh, in, uh, at a particular point in the story. Back in Achill, the Atlantic was in turmoil. A mass of waves, grey, viridian and turquoise, coiled and curled to the sky in a fury of foam on the far side of Schlieve Moor. It was as if the bloated Atlantic, was, with its giant foam bursts, was trying to outdo the reach of the mountain. For days on end, there was no break in the swell and lashing of the ocean, or in the screeching flight of the seabirds in North Echo. As the year drew to an end, many looked out from the island towards the distant places of Ballycroy, Duhoma, Blacksod, and Inishkey Islands, and wondered if James Lynchahan could possibly have survived being abroad in the ferment of such storms. Where was James Lynchahan? Was he still alive? That's the end of the chapter. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, that might give you a flavour of, um, of what the book's about. Um, Patricia has done extraordinary things, um, both in her working life, where she was somebody who believed in public service, and there are people here who worked with her, um, who I think will, will agree with me on that, and who, who worked very hard um, in the job that she did, and it was a high-pressure job. But as soon as she finished, um, she just this creativity flourished in her, and uh, she's produced this book and many other writings as well. And I know she's going to probably go back and start to start writing again tomorrow. Maybe she won't. Maybe she'll go walking because tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> she's all about that. <laughs> but um, we're all very proud of her, those who know her. Uh, and I think a lot of people here in this room know her. Some of you are related to her. And um, we're all extremely proud of her. And uh, I feel really honoured that she's asked me to launch her book tonight. So I'm delighted to launch The Veil Woman of Apple. I'm in that place. And um, just before I start, um, I just want to say we're all going to the White House after we finish here, so I know you've been standing for a long time. And there are some people here that I didn't expect. I've met so many people from Ackle, or with Ackle ancestors, from Mr. Vernon all over the place. And, uh, but I just would like to mention in particular Peggy Hayden. Uh, I didn't know Peggy, she lives in Limerick, but she was born in Ackle, and she told me my book finishes with the train journey back to Ackle of the ten harvesters who died in 1937 in a fire in Scotland 
and Peggy remembers being at that funeral, so that was very moving for, for me to hear that. And um, also, Michael McDonald, my cousin, I didn't expect to be here. This is the man, um, my father died seven or eight years ago, and I went to visit my mother, and she said, this cousin, she said, he's coming, he came to talk to your father non-stop, and your father was telling him these stories. And I said, well, I have to find out these stories. My father was dead, so I went to kill him off to Michael, and that was the start of it. So thanks for that, Michael, and I took the story. <laughs> <laughs>